So, um, I'm from Brand Finance in uh, London and uh, very pleased to be here in Istanbul. Um, I would just like to say thank you very much to everybody for attending um, on behalf of Mutrum and Brand Finance uh, generally. Um, always very well attended uh, in Turkey and um, we're very pleased to see you here. So um, what I was going to do was um, just make a few uh, comments here about um, just generally about the things that we've seen this morning. So both in terms of um, the banking league tables uh, and what's been going on in, in Turkey in contrast with one or two other areas um, and also to do with uh, some of the marketing programs that, uh, that flow, from, uh, flow from that. And we've heard this morning from, from a range um, of banks um, who have been talking about innovative products, etc. So the point is that after the break, uh, we have a panel discussion, and we're very keen that uh, that you should ask some questions. So uh, hopefully, a few thought starters here. Just before we start, um, I've got a got a TV commercial here um, that kind of sets the scene for where banking has come from, if you like. Um, it's a little bit, little bit depressing. You might have seen it before. Uh, it's for Strongbow Cider, but take a look at this. Today's been long. Can we remember why we're here? Roofers. You provide shelter for our families. Gas fixers, you bring us warmth to bathe, to eat. Bankers. Bankers. You, um, you, um, you, um. Sort of. Yes, ling you. Sort of. Yes, sort of. It's pretty depressing, really, when you know that's the view that the world has, uh, let's say, has had of banking. I think we're agreeing that uh, things have kind of moved on a little. And we spoke last year at these forums um, about, you know, has the criticism of bankers gone too far? And I think last year we concluded that it had uh, gone too far. And, you know, it's good to see some signs of, of progress since then. So, you know, where have we gone from then? I mean, actually in the UK, and it probably is just in the UK, you know, we haven't quite moved away from it. And you'll be familiar with, uh, with some of these stories and the problems with HSBC, uh, and particularly Barclays, who uh, unfortunately for them were the first bank to, uh, to be identified for, for fixing rates in LIBOR. Uh, and they've, they've kind of suffered for that. And, you know, it's just a reminder that these, uh, this kind of reputation does have a direct impact on, on brand value. Um, and you can, see, uh, you can see the effect it's had uh, for those guys. Um, and overall in the UK, you know, I think it's pretty much just the UK and we're getting there, but uh, one and a half billion has been wiped off um, of bank um, brand values over the last year. But, you know, things are, things are changing. Um, there's new leadership um, in the UK, and we're hearing speeches and comments from banking senior management that, you know, we've never actually heard before, but things about taking responsibility for fixing, um, about customers expecting better, customers actually being the focus. Um, and, you know, this guy, Anthony Jenkins, the new CEO for Barclays, um, has caused real front page headlines um, with this, uh, this email that uh, was sent around to all staff about adopting new values um, or else, you know, it's time to leave Barclays. And in fact, this kind of activity has probably had a lot more effect than any kind of, you know, above the line marketing campaign uh, could, could have had. So, you know, real, real progress. Um, so here we see uh, retail banking. Retail banking now pretty much out of the woods and doing well in terms of brand values. Uh, a big increase this year. Still seeing some problems with uh, the investing, investment banking uh, side. Uh, and it kind of remains to be seen with so many banks having both, you know, a foot in both camps. How does the profitability keep up if the activities in the investment banking arm are reduced? Um, so that clearly is a challenge for, uh, for a lot of you guys. Um, we've seen this morning about um, increases um, in, um, 
in, in bank values in North America, in Europe, um, in Asia. So, you know, it looks like from a brand value point of view, the, uh, the corner has been turned. Um, so you guys have done very well, 19% increase in brand value. Um, we clearly, uh, in Britain, we need to, we need to learn something uh, from you guys. We should have brought a few more people over here uh, from the UK, but that, that is a very large increase um, and looks, uh, looks sustainable to us. Uh, against the BRIC uh, markets, this got commented on earlier, um, a very strong position here, not too far behind, uh, behind India. You know, for a country the size of Turkey with the economy size that you have here, this is pretty, pretty impressive stuff. Um, you know, more brands in the top 500 than, than Brazil or uh, Russia, um, again, is very impressive. So 10 versus 8 in the other two markets. So, you know, really strong position in Turkey. And, uh, you know, you will know better than I um, how strong the, uh, the banking sector is here in Turkey uh, in terms of profits, in terms of asset quality, in terms of capital adequacy, good ROEs coming in, probably benefited from being a bit more domestically focused and a bit less um, focused on, uh, on global exposure. But I think, you know, from a marketing point of view, there have been some real innovative uh, programs going on. Uh, we've seen some of them this morning. Uh, from ActBank and from, uh, from BKM. So, you know, whether it's products, whether it's embracing the new social media age, you know, I think there are some genuine lessons that can be learned from the activities uh, of banks in, uh, in Turkey. So that's all pretty good. Um, I think, you know, it's easy, um, and we should not be complacent um, about this. There are always challenger brands out there. Uh, it's something to think about. Um, you know, whether it's like Metro Bank, um, which you know, doubled in size in one year. This is pretty impressive stuff, albeit from a, a, a fairly small base in that case. Um, and Virgin, I mean, a very strong brand. Virgin Money, 117% increase uh, in uh, brand value over a year. Um, you know, is something to, to, to watch out for. And then the established players in other markets, in retail particular, particularly, so here in the UK, Tesco and Sainsbury, uh, Cooperative Bank, they are already well established with strong brands. And, you know, they are plotting to move across into, into the banking space. And when they do, they typically do very, very well. So, you know, good signs, um, but uh, not to be complacent. Just a few areas to think about, um, you know, focusing on good old customer insights. And well, I think we've seen some evidence of that this morning and some good, you know, market research based um, programs leading to insights. We heard in ActBank about, you know, the average age of 31 across the organization. I mean, if your organization is that young, then, you know, you're going to be, you don't need too much market research, right? I mean, they're going to be developing products for the new age. But it's interesting, I mean, just over a 15-year um, uh, period here, and this is from the UK, but there are similar trends um, around the world. But, you know, 15 years ago, people were thinking about early retirement, buying a property abroad. These obviously have implications for, uh, for all banking services. You know, it's not like that now. It's, it's head down, it's retire um, when possible. And, you know, I dare not do the sums because I'm pretty sure there's not enough in the pension pot. So, you know, a really big shift uh, there. Things like buy to let. So buy to let was big in the UK 15 years ago. People were, um, you know, getting rich quick. And that's certainly not happening now. Things like, you know, kids flown the nest, so uh, children leaving home, that, that's kind of what happened, right? They left home. But, I mean, certainly in the UK, they're not doing that so much now. They're, they're coming back again. So, you know, this has huge implications for the kind of uh, banking products people, people will need. So, you know, the whole sense of downing tools and mortality is now much more one of carrying on working and a sense of people living longer and long, longevity. So, you know, you have to get under the skin of exactly what's going on in people's lives and drilling out that, that customer insight. So here's an interesting one. Is the proposition differentiated? So, I mean, when I looked at this, some, some of these uh, propositions are not particularly uh, strong. 
Uh, I mean, connecting customers to opportunities. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, this, this looks too good to be true. We're going to make everyone better off. But so, you know, clearly having the right proposition is important. But, you know, could you actually match, and you could do this in any market, could you match the proposition with the brand? And, you know, I challenge in most cases, certainly uh, amongst the public uh, rather than within the industry, I think uh, people would struggle to match the proposition uh, to the brand. So, you know, clearly important to be differentiated. I feel I can use this because a friend of mine uh, was CMO at uh, Zurich Insurance and he uses this to illustrate the fact that, you know, are we communicating clearly? Uh, this was a major campaign, um, a major product for Zurich Insurance. Uh, our brand promise, Zurich delivers when it matters. Uh, you know, is it really clear what's going on there? Is it really clear what the customer benefit is uh, from, uh, from this ad? Um, and by the way, you know, just because there's some kind of a help point, you know, is that really being delivered and, and what is the help being provided? So I'm sure your campaigns are a lot clearer than this is, but, uh, but something else to think about. So um, back into Turkey, is, is the brand leveraging its full potential value? Um, I mean, it is great um, that there are so many bank brands um, in the top uh, 500 from, uh, from Turkey. But when you look at the, uh, the brand value, which is the grey line here, uh, being generated from those brands, you, know, you do see in Turkey that it's, uh, it's, it's not such a, such a great picture. So clearly there are one or two brands here that are doing particularly well, and it may well be we've heard from them uh, today, but there are a lot more bank brands out there um, that could be driving the overall brand value. So definitely some work to be done there. Is value-driven brand management employed? Lastly, you know, there are some important questions here about do you really know which brand drivers um, are driving brand strength? You know, are they the right drivers? Which are the ones to drive the maximum brand strength? You know, which marketing programs have the most impact on the bottom line? So I think, you know, in a lot of marketing departments, there's a lot of talk about driving the marketing KPIs or the brand KPIs, which is kind of fine, but does it go that extra step? Do you actually know when you do a particular marketing campaign what impact it has on the bottom line? Is the brand being leveraged to its full extent to drive the business? I mean, you know, it's not just the kind of master brand, but it's the portfolio of brands that often exist in businesses. Is it the right mix of brands in the business? Maybe there should be a shift to a master brand. Uh, maybe there should be a particular brand developed for a particular new niche. You know, these things really drive uh, the business value of the, uh, of the company. Um, and then, you know, are adequate measures in place to establish a more effective um, brand management framework? I mean, we all know that what gets measured tends to get managed. So, you know, pretty important to look at the way the measuring systems are working. So, just a few thoughts. Um, you know, we've seen the brand values this morning. Um, we know that we can all go along kind of business as usual. I think you know, the important thing about looking at the brand in a bit more detail is to figure out, you know, in some cases, there's quite a lot of value there, but is it at risk? You know, there are players coming in from the outside, constantly changing customer insight issues. It could very well be at risk. On the other hand, you know, is there some value to be unlocked? You know, the size of the prize is something that's worth, worth uh, figuring out. So um, I'm going to leave you uh, there. That's the, there was one. Oh, there you go. Questions, please. I think we have a break now. And then there's a panel discussion afterwards. Um, and uh, we invite you to, uh, to take part in that. So thank you very much. <laughs>